Which of the following does not come under the vertical trajectories of the maxilla? Now, what are these vertical trajectories of the maxilla? So, they are basically the trajectories of force which are seen. Now, the force trajectories was first given or it was first explained by Benninghoff. So, in 1925, he did extensive research and studies on the dried craniofacial bones and he found that the architecture of the craniofacial skeleton is built in such a way that it helps to resist functional stresses. Okay, so, the functional stresses are mostly the ones that are derived from the occlusal forces. Okay, so, in the craniofacial skeleton, most of the stress is coming from the occlusal forces. Now, these stresses, okay, so how the... Uh, craniofacial skeleton reacts or how the bone responds to these functional stresses is by uh, increasing their thickness okay so that they are able to withstand this stress better so these uh, thickened areas of bones are known as buttresses okay are known as buttresses now what Benninghoff stressed was that the functional stress bearing areas can be identified as lines of stress along the bones. So he named these as the trajectories of force or the Benninghoff's lines. Okay, so these are basically areas or pathways where maximum pressure and tension is going to be uh, passed. Okay, so they, are, they indicate the direction of those functional stresses. And these forces or these trajectories are seen in all types of bones, spongy bone as well as compact bone. So they don't depend upon the bone per se. What it depends upon is the reaction of the bone to these forces, which is seen in the form of thickening like buttresses. So these are seen in the maxilla as well as the mandible okay so these trajectories of force are seen in the maxilla as well as in the mandible but in both these areas they appear slightly different okay so in the maxilla the trajectories present itself along the plates and the bones uh, as bony thickenings called buttresses along the maxillary bones okay so it is not restricted to the maxilla it is the entire craniofacial skeleton but for the sake of simplicity it has been divided into the maxilla and into the mandible now, in the maxilla, there are vertical trajectories. Okay, there are vertical trajectories and there are horizontal trajectories. So, these vertical and horizontal just depends upon the orientation of the bones. Okay, and the orientation of the forces. So, in the vertical uh, trajectories, we see or in the uh, vertical buttresses, we see the frontonasal buttress. Okay, the malar zygomatic buttress and we see the pterygoid buttress so these trajectories in this image are the ones that are represented by the red lines okay so the vertical trajectories in the image are represented by the red lines and the horizontal trajectories are the palatal bones okay like the hard palate the orbital ridges the zygomatic arches and the lesser wing of sphenoid. Okay, so these are the horizontal trajectories which are marked in green in this image. Now the frontonasal buttress, okay, this is the vertical trajectory. It is the one that is going to transmit the forces from the incisors up until the uh, first premolars okay so all the forces from this segment is going to transfer this way from into this bone trajectory okay and it go, it's going upwards cranially along the sides of the piriform aperture so this is the piriform aperture here so it is going along the sides okay and it terminates in the frontal bone so it goes passes through the nasal bone and ends in the frontal bone so this is the frontonasal buttress then is the malar zygomatic buttress and this is the one where the forces are going from the posterior uh, part of the dentition. Okay, so from here all the forces are traveling this way and from the malar bone to the zygomatic bone and then finally it is going to terminate uh, in the base of the skull. So uh, uh, it is also going to uh, run cranially, mesially. Okay, it's going to pass this way and it is going to meet in the upper part of the frontonasal bone. Okay, so this also terminates in the frontal bone. 
then we come to the pterygoid buttress okay so this is the trajectory that transmits the stress from the conga of the nasal bone and the second and third mol uh, molar so it is from the inner surface okay and that again ends in the middle portion of the base of the skull so here it uh, this is the base of the skull inside of the orbital bone this is where this trajectory is going to terminate the other stresses which are felt in the horizontal direction are the ones that are going to be undertaken by these green lines. Okay, so these are all the horizontal trajectories of force. Then we come to something that is the mandible uh, trajectories of force. So in the maxilla, how there was vertical and horizontal. In the mandible, because the mandible is a complete unit by itself which is mobile and also its arrangement or the alignment of the bone is in a trabecular pattern which is different from the more porous type of bone that is seen in the maxilla the trajectories of force in the mandible are slightly different so here most of the forces are going to radiate from beneath the teeth okay so you'll see individual uh, for lines of forces that are coming from uh, from the apex of the teeth and they join together to form a common stress line. So this common stress line or the common pillar of force is going to uh, develop which runs from one side of the condyle okay, onto the other side. So it, it runs from one side to the other side and this is the one where all the force is going to be concentrated. Also, the lower part or the thick cortical layer that is seen of compact bone at the uh, angle of the mandible or on the lower border of the mandible. So, if you palpate, you can see that your lower border of the mandible has a very thick and cortical covering over it. Okay, So, this bone is going to uh, offer great amount of resistance to the forces that is going to be exerted on it okay so if you see there is one line going here like this the other line going like this now what is seen between these two lines is usually the inferior alveolar nerve and canal okay so because these trajectories of force are running above and below the inferior alveolar nerve canal okay they are actually protecting the nerve from any kind of forces or any kind of damage this forms the unloaded nerve concept unloaded nerve concept okay that is uh, the architecture of the bone is in such a way that the uh, nerve is never harmed okay the other trajectory pattern that is also seen near the symphysis okay is the one that is coming from the gonial angle so it comes downward from the coronoid process okay so from here it is running downwards from the gonion towards the gonion and then downwards into the ramus and the body of the mandible okay so these are accessory trajectories of force and they could be due to the direct effect of attachment of muscles so as we know there are a lot of muscles of mastication which are going to have their attachment in the mandible so these stress trajectories could also be a result of the attachment of the muscles which is causing their thickening okay so these are the various types of stress trajectories which are seen in the maxilla and the mandible now in our question we we have been asked which does not come under the vertical trajectories okay so the vertical tra trajectories of the maxilla consist of the frontonasal buttress the malar zygomatic and the pterygoid buttress so the lesser wing of sphenoid is actually a horizontal trajectory of the maxilla and not the vertical trajectory